Mountains of engagement. Uh, this technique is introduced to me from, by our very own Malvika. And I've since used it at least five to six times. Incredibly helpful for me to structure my thinking around um, community engagement and pathways that Anelda also mentioned already. So um, I'm, I hope, and, and I think we're all aware of this kind of management levels within you know, your typical organization. You have members and leaders with different responsibilities and tasks and delegations and completion. Um, and there are also opportunities for people to be, get appraisals, to get promoted, to have more leadership ability and feel recognized for their work. Um, similarly, you can imagine in the community, this type of structure do exist implicitly or explicitly. Um, and so it is important for us to think a little bit about, you know, how people interact within your community, the organization, uh, the project and its culture, um, discover how people can move between different types of interactions and develop pathways for people to move from sort of first contact, which is the, the lower level of engagement to um, sustained engagement to leadership. So uh, speeding through this, <laughs> uh, you can construct your mountain of engagement in five steps. You start with a list of all the people's interactions in your work. This could be things like, you know, following you on Twitter to writing a blog post for your project or attending a community call, list everything. Um, and then try and um, create bands of engagement. So uh, think about, you know, whether how much time or how much effort this takes and how engaged they are correspondingly. And then group these interactions into your bands and then give each of them a name. So it could be like first contact or sustained participation to like the top level five there usually is leadership. And then look at how folks are moving between these different levels. Um, identify what work and what doesn't work. This is gonna be a lot, the longest process once you've sort of, um, I would say it never ends basically <laughs> once you've constructed your mountain. You constantly need to be asking your community and you know, sort of getting a sense of how you can modify these so that people can actually effectively um, climb up the mountain. Um, and use that insight to prioritize your work to create more opportunities. So as I said, I've gone through this really, really quickly. The rest of the slide deck has a lot of questions that you can use to ask yourself um, and your community to basically um, do more of that step four and step five type of work, but that's the gist. I hope I give you a quick overview um, of, of what's happening here and what's this technique and what's useful for it. And if you have further questions, you know, please approach any of us, um, Malvika, Yo, Bernice, and myself, and probably others in the cohort as well. And we're all familiar um, with this technique um, to some extent. So, uh, handing over to Bernice to talk about welcoming new contributors to projects. Okay, thanks, Amy. So I will be also uh, short, trying to be short. So here is more a practical way how you can welcome new contributors and engage them and empower them in your project. So I will share some things. Um, so Anelda already discussed about um, so about the pathway here is more on the mentorship side. So how you can mentor your contributors uh, to build the pathway through their pro through your project from the first interaction to leaderships. Um, whoop, sorry, wrong. Um, so first things is how you attract contributors. So you created pathways, but how you can also, you need to document your project. You learn about readme, contributing uh, files, the code of conduct, license, one map are really good tools or practical things you need to add to your project. Um, one of the things that is really helpful to attract contributors is to create small tutorials on how to contribute to your project. Label your issues on your GitHub repository if you have a GitHub or GitLab repository or any other to, to say which, um, which issue should, could be easily solved by, by new contributors. So you can li label them newcomer friendly, help pointed, first time only, first timer only, to be sure that these uh, issues are um, done by people that uh, are not are not so much familiar with your project. Another thing that is really helpful is to organize collaboration events so, or co-fest where the people can come and learn how to contribute to your project and they, they have people that can help them there. 
Um, then what is good also is to, when you have new contributors, is monitoring your contribution. So when your new contributor comes, they need to, it's good that they have support on how to get started, where to find the help, I have clear requirements in each of the issues. Um, what are the requirements for solving these issues and point to relevant information when needed, so contributing deadlines and others. And so when a new contributor arrives, it's really great if you could welcome them and point to these resources. So either you do it manually for each of the contribution, but you have also some welcome boards that you can uh, um, link to your GitHub repository that could uh, point that automatically to the people. Um, one other thing that is make the commitment to respond to inquiries. So it, it requires time, but it's helpful for the people that are not feeling um, that they are doing the work for nothing. Um, and once they contributed or submitted a pull request or GitHub or on GitLab, uh, thank them for their work because they did something at least. And they take the time to learn how to do that. And it's really, um, yeah, I think it's the most important things. Give good, consistent and helpful feedback during the review. So both uh, good, uh, positive also, and also sometimes the negative feedbacks is also important. Ask questions about what they have done, guide them, highlight their work on your project. So put them on GitHub or social media. Have a list of contributors is also useful when you, where you can highlight the contributors, even if it's just fixing a small issue, a small, um, I mean, small mistakes or small, uh, how to say, uh, yeah, uh, small things. Point them to a good next issue task that they can do for the that they can become more and more. Uh, uh, they can you can empower them, and then you have you can go to the next step. So continuing monitoring. So how you can you can empower more and more your contributors. So being available. What are the time? What how much time they have and how they want to to you can you need to learn from them that. Um, I will not go through the details here because we are really short in time, but you have the detail there about what you can do. Um, provide ongoing support. So monitor any channel or chat channel that you have, answer any newcomers questions, provide guidance and guidelines, connect people with other members because you are not the only one that can guide them or monitor them. There is other contributors in your project hopefully, and then they can help others. And organize really, community events that are really really great welcome support and mentor new contributors for me it was really the main things uh, that i learned from the different projects i'm involved in <clears throat> establish clear expectations pathway and and personal i think it's all really great uh, communicate regularly so give feedbacks to the to your contributors and and yeah involve them also in in different um, in the different decisions that can be taken provide structures through the review process, encourage constantly them and, provide, and give them um, some more and more leadership then and model best practices. And there are some questions. So if there are an issue, you can start monitoring today and do you need to set up a chat channel uh, or something where the people could ask their question? And should you monitor any of your current contributors to take more roles in your project? It was really quick, but I think you can learn a lot. For, I mean, it's really it was really helpful for me for my projects uh, to 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 use to apply this practice this small trick there, and get more people there. Thanks, Amy. You can. Yeah, I don't thank have you. The end. <laughs> thank you very much, Berenice. Um, yeah, sorry, flew through that, folks. Uh, lots to digest. I'm also, we're also one minute over the hour already. So if you need to log off, please do now. Um, we have a couple of assignments for you. One of them mentioned already by Anelda. Um, there are, um, you know, if you can complete some personas and pathways ideally with your community together, then that would be awesome, fantastic. If not, you know, I guess the most important thing actually. Uh, we'd like you to do is to think about your presentations and graduation. Um, we have next week three rehearsal calls, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, the times are in the calendar. Um, you, need, you need to, um, I think, put your name down for one of them. Um, 
check your email. Thank you, Mark. You can check your emails uh, for further instructions and details. If anything is unclear, yeah. just give us a shout on Slack. Um, loads to read from this call, so I hope you can, you know, take the time to do it. And again, we're we're here, so let us know um, if you have any questions or if there's any thoughts and comments that you'd like to share after. All right. Thank you. Um, hope to see you all next week. Thank you so much to our two guest speakers and everyone for attending.